One of the first places we're likely to visit after we leave Vault 101 is the Springvale School. We find the school due north of Megaton and slightly northeast of the ruins of Springvale. Following the road northeast, we stop before the school's ancient roadside sign, SES, Springvale Elementary School. November 16th, Family Reading Night. November 21st, School Board Meeting. November 22nd, early dismissal, no school. So the day before the bombs dropped on October 23rd, the children of Springvale Elementary were dismissed from school early. Well, it's heartening to know that at least these children met the apocalypse at home with their parents. As we head over to the ruins, we see the word Springvale Elementary still above the door, though it's missing a few letters, and we get attacked. We see that part of the interior of this crumbling building is exposed to the elements. Before we can enter, we'd better clear these guys. Passing the ruins of the school's playground, we can turn east to find a big broken hole in the corner of the building. The raiders attack us from the ruins of the second and third floors. Peeking inside, we see a bottom basement level with another raider. Are you we also see two doors, a door at the very top and then a door at the basement level. This means we'll likely stumble upon these floors in the natural exploration of this dungeon, so we'll save this for later and enter through the main door. For now, let's head back out and finish exploring the perimeter of the school. We pass by a ruined motorcycle and two big trash cans, and then rounding a corner we see a big fenced off area. Looks like some sort of electric tower. On the fence, we see a big sign warning high voltage. Who erects a high voltage electrical tower right next to an elementary school? That seems a little reckless. We find a gate and the gate is locked with a very easy lock. And upon entry, we find a huge stash of irradiated toxic barrels. I mean, this has to have been pre-war, which means that someone, either a corporation or the government, dumped toxic barrels right next to an elementary school. This is awful. On the ground near to these barrels, we can loot some rat away, a first aid kit, and a hunting rifle if we need it. When done, we can finish going around the perimeter of the school, and when we're ready, walk beneath the bus stop and enter through the main doors. As soon as we enter, we attract the attention of some raiders roaming the nearby hallways. With these two dead, we can turn on our light and safely explore. And as is to be expected with every raider den, the raiders have gone full horror show in this place. We find decapitated and dismembered corpses hanging from chains and hooks from the ceiling. They've even stapled some of these corpses to the walls. And in the middle of the school's lobby, we find a huge cage. And inside we find a bunch of tiny skeletons. These must be the remains of children. We see blood dripping from the top of the cage. There's a body up there somewhere. We'll have to find a way on top later. What's going on here, kid? I thought you were some sort of badass. Did these raiders kidnap and murder a bunch of children? Why were they keeping them in this cage? To sell them? If to sell them, why did they kill them? And if they were caged by the raiders, why is the cage door unlocked when we arrive? We'll contemplate the significance of this later. For now, we need to move on to the east. We can follow a big trail of blood through a doorway to the east to arrive in a hallway. We see a human skeleton in a hanging cage on the ground and the alphabet on a western wall. The first door to the right leads to one of the classrooms. Some of the desks are still stacked up on top of each other, as school children would do just before the weekend in a time long ago. 
On the southern wall, we see the remains of some children's art. There's a cutout of a woman, a picture of an airplane, even a big drawing that says dad on it. We remember seeing some of these pictures in the home of Dr. Boris in Higgs Village of the Old World Blues expansion for Fallout New Vegas. Obsidian reused many of the art assets from Fallout 3, including some of these children's pictures that we find here in Springvale School. Behind an overturned desk, we find a copy of some sheet music. We can use this during the quest Agatha's Song, which I covered in another video, which you can watch here. Or if we've already completed that quest, we can go ahead and use it as a player home decoration. We see a bunch of raider graffiti on the chalkboard, but that's about it. So heading out, we can go north up the hallway, and here we find an adult skeleton. We can remember this for reference. We see that the hallway continues to the north, but also turns down another hallway to the west. Here we find a row of lockers to the south, and the ladies' restroom through a doorway to the north. There's a bottle of buff out on one of the sinks. Incidentally, we find a lot of buff out in the ruins of pre-war schools in both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, likely because the students were using buff out for competitive sports. Though to find it in an elementary school, that's an early time to get that competitive. While we were exploring, we seem to have attracted the attention of a nearby raider. Better hope I don't find you. Bullshit. Come out and fight. Who's out there? And then another one comes out of a room on the far end of the hallway. When she's dead, we can open some double doors to the south. We see that these were the double doors that led to the school lobby, with that giant cage lying on the ground in the middle. Looking up, we clearly see something resting on top of the cage, including what appears to be a Nuka-Cola Quantum. We need to find a way up there. So turning back around and going north, we can enter the men's restroom. But while we were exploring, Jericho ran off and killed a bunch of raiders. Where'd you go? Come on, Jericho, leave some for me. Well, before we go up to where Jericho was, let's finish exploring this boy's bathroom. We don't find anything in the stalls. There is another dismembered body laying on this mattress, and lying on a table next to the tools likely used to dismember that corpse are a tidy stash of chems, a stem pack, med -X, jet, and buff out. Heading out, we reach the end of the hallway. We can turn right, where Jericho went and got himself into trouble, or we can turn left, Let's go left for now. We see a big trail of blood leading into a western room. Oh, it brings us to a mole rat. Oh, thank God for that. Still, man, that's gross. There are two stim packs on a western countertop, and then we hear it again. Jericho! Come on, buddy, what's wrong with you? Stay with me. Do you understand? Oh. oh. This guy, I realize he's 65 and he was retired for a while there and he's trying to relive his glory years, but please, buddy, one thing at a time. Back in the room, we can finish exploring by looting a rat away on a kitchen table. Heading out, we see a desk tipped over in the hallway, almost as if it was used as some sort of shield which is strange because we don't find these raiders attacking anyone when we arrive, nor any evidence that they had to wrest this place from entrenched defenders. So why the barricade? And going through a door to the east brings us back into the school lobby on the other side of that cage. All right, so we've finished exploring this wing of the school. To continue, we can head north down the hallway to where Jericho kept running off to. This connects to another hallway going east or west. Heading east, we find a doorway to the north that leads to a stairway, which leads to a door to the basement. Before we go exploring the basement, I want to finish exploring this top level. So going back up, we can turn left down the hallway to see that it turns south. Connecting to the first hallway, we entered from the lobby, making a big circle. To the east, we find a storage room, but in here, all we find is a first aid kit on the wall to the south and a stim pack on a countertop. 
Turning around and this time going west down the hallway, we ended a big cage. There's a doorway to the left and a doorway to the right. Going right first, we find another classroom that has been converted into a raider bedroom. Mattresses littering the ground, more pre-war children's drawings all over the floor. But aside from a first aid kit against the southern wall, there's nothing here. As we head out, we can open the cage to the cell door to find more children's skeletons. There's blood splatter all over the ground. And what's that? Bloody handprints on the wall. And these handprints are all child height. This tells us that these kids were slaughtered in this cell, leaning against the walls for support after being mortally wounded. I count 10 skeletons in here. Why would raiders murder 10 children? We already know from Paradise Falls that slaves are no good to raiders dead. It doesn't make any sense in the world to just murder them here. At last, we can go through the southern doorway and climb the stairs to the second level. And here we see what Jericho has been up to. Oh my gosh. We find two raider corpses at the top of the stairs. One is a raider mini boss, and on his body is the Springvale library key. That may come in handy later. At the top, we go north and then east to enter another hallway. We find another one of Jericho's victims in a corner to the southwest, and we see three doors. We'll go through the southeastern one first. This brings us to a balcony overlooking the school entrance. And look at this, there's a gap in the railing just where we need to leap atop the cage. Here we find the source of that dripping blood into the cage below, a dismembered corpse stapled to this mattress. And right next to it, we find a Nuka-Cola Quantum. After looting it, we can leap back across to the balcony, loot the lockers in the trash can and the Nuka-Cola machine, but we find that this is a dead end. So turning around and going west, then turning north, we can enter the next room to the east. This must have been a computer lab, and it connects to a room to the northeast through a big hole in the wall. But before we enter the hole in the wall, we see that there's another hallway to the northwest, where we find a door leading to the Capitol Wasteland. This brings us outside, to the third floor, where we shot that raider before we entered the school. This floor is mostly collapsed. We can go down a staircase to the second floor, and then take a scrap wood ramp to the platform to the north. From here, we can go east to climb a stairway to a ruined room on the second floor, where we can loot the raider we killed earlier. Here we just find a couple of containers. So there's really nothing much here, we do see that basement level, but we'll probably explore that when we find the door down there. So instead for now, we'll head back to the third story door and re-enter Springville Elementary. Heading east across the hallway and into the computer lab, we can now travel through that broken wall. This leads to a library of sorts, and you'd think we'd find a lot of pre-war books here, but no, I didn't find a whole lot. In fact, I don't think I found any at all. There's a storage room to the north with a hanging corpse inside and big puddles of blood all over. We do find a lot of dirty water here, four whole bottles, as well as a buff out, two stim packs, and a mentats. On the northern shelf, we find one jet, and then on the eastern shelf, we find a buff out. Heading out, we find more ruined terminals in this library. It looks like at one point, someone used these bookshelves as a shield or a barricade. Was it the raiders or someone else long ago? To continue, we can use the library key we found on the raider Jericho killed to open the big double doors to the east. This leads us to a boss. Goodness, careful, Jericho. You just about walked in front of my laser. Heading north, we can loot the body, where we find the Springvale Basement Key and the Springvale Raider Mining Log. Now, we're going to ignore the mining log for now because it has the same text on it that we find in a journal entry on the terminal to the southwest. There's a bloody skull on top of the terminal and lying next to it is a copy of Duck and Cover. But this is a special book because it's an abnormally large copy of Duck and Cover. All other copies of Duck and Cover in the game are much smaller. On the terminal, we find three options and the ability to turn the computer off by choosing disconnect user, suck me, ha ha ha. Oh, this raider humor. We'll start by reading log entry number one. Bopo died like a jerk. He didn't have half a bad idea setting up here. 
we had a good thing going, picking off caravans and traders on their way into Megaton. He was stupid to try and raid the town. Dumbass deserved the bullet Sims put in his head. Anyway, there's sweeter water to be had here. That damn vault is what we should be trying to get into, not that rag-ass town. If we can get in there, ain't none of us gonna want again for the rest of our lives. So these raiders once attacked Megaton, and their leader, Bapo, was killed by Megaton's sheriff, Lucas Sims, the very man who sold us our Megaton home. And we learned that these guys were trying to dig their way into a nearby vault? Well, wait a minute. The only nearby vault is Vault 101. Our vault, our former home. Have these raiders been trying to dig their way into Vault 101? In the next one, number two. Some of the scabs got tired of digging the tunnel and started using mines to get into the caves. Not a half bad idea. The explosions damn near knocked the building apart. We got a new window or two on the side of the building. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to have some of the boys knock over a caravan for more explosives, but we'll have to use fewer in the blasts or some assholes from Megaton will come looking. So while digging their tunnel to Vault 101, they found some caves? Well, I suppose that would have made their job easier. But what made the caves? Water? Erosion? Interesting choice of the word scab here. Scab is usually used to refer to someone who crosses a picket line, refusing to take part in an employee strike. Could he have meant scav here, short for scavenger? In which case, could that mean that these raiders were using enslaved labor, kidnapped and enslaved scavengers or wastelanders to do the digging for them? If that were the scenario, then maybe using the word scab would make sense. After all, the scavenger is doing the manual labor while all the raiders are lounging around. They're crossing the picket line, in a way. Maybe in backwards raider culture, anyone who does manual work is derisively called a scab. Though it seems odd to me that the raiders would be giving high-powered explosives to a bunch of kidnapped scavengers. In the final one, log entry three. Hit a damn hive of ants in the tunnel. Bastards ate seven of our best diggers before we could lock off the way in. Need to find some way to poison them so we can keep digging and blast into the vault. If we don't get there soon, I think I'm going to end up like Bapo. Except it won't be the sheriff popping me. It's going to be my own men. Oh, so giant ants made the caves. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> but wait, that means that a bunch of giant carnivorous ants have been digging in the ground, building their colony right outside Vault 101. I wonder why over 200 years, the ants haven't been more of a problem to the residents of Vault 101. But we need to investigate this to see exactly how much damage these raiders have done. How far did they get to the vault? Could someone easily pick up where they left off? After looting three ammunition containers under a table to the east, we can head north down the hallway, near to the ashes of the raider boss we killed, where we get charged by a raider dog. Heading through the door and down the stairs, we find a door to the right, which just leads to a narrow hallway filled in with rubble, which the raiders have been using for a bedroom. We can then head out and go to the bottom of the stairs. Here, we find another door to the Springvale School lower level, the basement. Heading inside, we pass a generator and pipes spewing some sort of flammable gas. This hallway then turns right, and we see a door to Springville Elementary School. But before we can go through it, we find a raider. On the other side of this door, we find that stairway leading up to the hallway we explored earlier. Okay, so now we know where the first door to the basement led. Heading back, we can continue our path west. We find a path to the south with a body hanging from some chains, or we can continue west, loot the ashes of the raider we just vaporized, and then turn down another hallway to the south. We'll try this first. Here we find a small room with a double door to the right and a generator to the left, but we can continue south and round the corner to clear this level of raiders. When done, we can head back, turn west to loot some dirty water and rad X on a shelf to the left, and then open the big double doors to the capital wasteland. This brings us outside, and by now it's dark. We find ourselves on the other side of that double door we found in the basement of this ruined exterior. 
From here, we can turn east to loot the body of that raider we killed earlier, and then pass south through a broken doorway to explore these bathrooms. This must have been part of a locker room, but we really don't find much down here, so after looting the lockers, we can head back into Springvale Elementary through the double doors to the south. And just as we enter, another raider approaches from the south. After killing him, we can continue down the hallway to the east, where we come out on the other end of that first hallway we found. There's that same hanging body from chains. We find a door in this hallway to the east. We see a hole in the floor there. We'll check that out in a minute. Instead, we can go south down the hallway and then turn east to find a supply room. Springvale Elementary is a great source for dirty water. Next to some radix, we find even more bottles of dirty water on this shelf. Turning around to the coffee counter, we find more buff out right next to another first aid kit. After looting the supply closet, we can head out and loot more dirty water on a shelf to the east. When done, we can head through the doorway into the eastern room. We see that this floor has collapsed into a tunnel below. And then we remember. These raiders have been digging towards Vault 101. This must be the tunnel that they dug. After looting some jet on a countertop to the south, we can head into the hole. And almost immediately, we find the ants. I'm gonna fuck your shit up, kid. Two hits, kid. Two hits. Got you. Well, these guys didn't look so bad. Teeny tiny baby ants. As we continue along, the tunnel splits to the southwest or the northeast. Pulling out our local map, we see that the path to the southeast is a dead end, so let's explore that first. And sure enough, we come right up against a rock wall. We remember reading on the raider terminal that the raiders filled in one of these tunnels to keep the ants back until they could find a poison to get rid of them. Could this be some of the rubble they used to block the path? Turning around and continuing down the tunnel to the southeast, we find more ants. Fuck your shit up, kid. Oh, that boy was bigger. I wonder if we'll find even bigger ones deeper. At the very end of this path, we enter a large cave. This must be one of the caves that the raiders blasted into to save time while digging towards Vault 101. But we know that this is actually part of a giant ant colony. So where are the ants? Local map shows us that the path continues to the north, but we do see a little gap in the rock to the southeast. Creeping forward, however, we're too large. We can't fit through this gap. Why is this gap here? Well, instead, we can go down the tunnel to the north. Here we find the bodies of two wastelanders. We loot some jet, but before doing anything else, more ants leap at us from over a rocky ledge to the north. Goodness. But wait, I hear more scurrying. You hear that, Jericho? Where are they coming from? Ah! So that's what that was for. Too big for humans, just the right size for ants. These wastelanders must be some of the scabs the raiders were talking about in the terminal. These are two of the seven scab diggers, enslaved and forced to work for the raiders only to be killed by giant ants. Now we can loot this scene. We find two clips of 556mm rounds and some minor chems on the wastelander bodies. Though beneath one of the bodies we see a Chinese special operations manual, but we can't loot it. Sadly, we have to physically move one of these corpses to loot it. But we've come to a dead end. The ledge to the north is too high up. We can't get up there. And we've already seen that the small path to the southeast is too small. We can't crawl under there. Those tunnels must lead deeper into the ant nests. Perhaps it's in our best interest to just leave them alone. Well, I feel comfortable enough to leave this cave without worrying for the safety of Vault 101. These ants are doing a pretty good job of protecting their home. Any use of further explosions is likely to alert them, causing them to seek out the miners and kill them before they can ever reach Vault 101. For now, Vault 101 is safe. Also, taking a look at our world map, 
they're not even close. We're at the end of the tunnel that they were digging, and they've barely made their way towards Vault 101. If anything, they're burrowing in the wrong direction. These raiders may have been tenacious, but they were a bit lacking on smarts. And that is the full story of the Springville Elementary School, but I have to ask, how do you interpret all of those child skeletons? Are those really the victims of raiders? Or have those skeletons been there for hundreds of years? It could be that these skeletons belong to the children of the wastelanders the raiders kidnapped to dig their tunnel. It could be that since these kids couldn't lift a shovel, the raiders herded them into cages and then executed them. But this kind of goes against what we know about raider culture in the capital wasteland. Raiders rarely give up on an opportunity to make a profit. When raiders kidnap people, it's to sell them into slavery to make a profit. The raiders we found near to the train tracks leading to the pit, the raiders at Paradise Falls, even the raiders at Evergreen Mills were using slaves and possibly even child slaves for their nefarious purposes, but they weren't killing them. So it seems unlikely to me that these raiders would just round up a bunch of people and especially a bunch of children, put them in these cages just to murder them that's senseless. The raiders don't profit from it. I also think it would be hard, 200 years after the bombs dropped, to find this many children in the wasteland. Yeah, there are children in the wasteland, sometimes even high concentrations of them, like at Little Lamplight, which is its own special case, but usually we only find one or two. After all, how many children are in Megaton? Well, only two. How many children are in Rivet City? Not a whole lot. We found 10 child skeletons in one cage alone. I didn't count the other, but it was at least six or seven. How could raiders have gotten their hands on so many children at one time in the first place? Well, I think a more likely explanation is that they didn't. The tiny skeletons we found in the school are the remains of the children who once went there. We know that school was out the day the bombs dropped. The bombs dropped on a Saturday morning, but this school is really close to the town of Springvale. What if on the morning of Saturday, October 23rd, the sirens blare, the townsfolk get stirred up into a panic, and they all head to the only safe place they could find, the nearby school, which at least has a concrete basement with a gymnasium, maybe even a pool. They race to this school for safety and then after the bombs drop, gather together to protect each other in the earliest moments of the new post-apocalyptic world. But as we've learned from Fallout lore, especially when we listen to the holotapes from the Turnquist family, who told us the kinds of things that were going on in the big city in the days, weeks, and months after the bombs dropped, the nuclear apocalypse shattered American society. Neighbors turned on neighbors, town turned on town, and from this new inhospitable climate emerged the Wasteland's first raider gangs, doing untold horrors to each other in the name of survival. My bet is that the earliest raiders in the Capital Wasteland's history the ones that emerged just after the bombs dropped, banded together and raided the town of Springvale for plunder. The residents took shelter in this school. The parents put up the best defense they could, which is why we found bookshelves and tables still set out as barricades, which wouldn't really make sense otherwise. After all, the raiders we found here didn't have to kill anyone to take this school. They likely found it empty. So why would they erect barricades out of tables, desks, and bookshelves if there's no one here to fight but each other. The Wasteland's first raiders attacked the school, but the parents were no match, and the raiders slaughtered them. They then found themselves with all these kids. Kids that get hungry, kids that cry and whine, kids that get annoying, kids that won't shut up. They spared the kids for a while. Maybe they can put the kids to work, or maybe they can sell the kids to passing travelers. But remember, this is the early days of the apocalypse. It's still dangerous to spend too much time outside. People don't travel a lot, but when they found that they couldn't sell or trade the kids, that the kids were consuming all of their food and water, they rounded them up, locked them in the cages. <laughs> Thank you.
these poor kids, covered in blood and dying from their wounds, left tiny handprints on the walls of their cells before they died. 200 years later, a new generation of raiders move in, unlock the cell doors out of curiosity. But because they're raiders, they don't move the corpses and instead fill the place with new ones. That is the best scenario I can paint based on the evidence we find in Springvale Elementary. But what's your story? How do you interpret the evidence we find in this school? Could its story really be so dark and horrible? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. So if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Lawbringer. That's right, when we vaporize raiders with our laser gun, they turn into big piles of ash. And if we have the Lawbringer perk, we still find a finger resting on top. This shirt celebrates that fact, as does its companion. Tap that ash. Or if you don't like either of the text on these shirts, you can find a shirt with just the image. You can also find a bunch of other shirts and an assortment of other items. So if you're interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook to keep up to date with all Oxhorn news. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.